All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Chaos Community Call, February 28th, 2023. Uh, thank you, Sean. Minutes are in the chat. Yes, Sophia, I heard New York is getting snow. I don't know how much, but I'm guessing a lot. I heard, I heard it was just an inch or two. What's the truth? That doesn't count. You're muted somehow. <laughs> See the miracles of the internet. Your audio is being blocked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When you tell us when you get your mute or your microphone, she, she thinks this, out, you she can thinks just this, blurt out how much snow you have. <laughs> she, think, she thinks the snow is already gone less than an inch. Oh, oh, well, that was that. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's good to have everybody here. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to kind of split this up over a couple different things. One is the agenda. Uh, that you see here. And then in the second half, you know, we're going to just continue to focus on ChaosCon that we have coming up with Open Source Summit North America in Vancouver uh, in May. So uh, just a note, we have an onboarding session for New Chaotix uh, tomorrow at 11. Um, and that's on Zoom. Is that correct, Elizabeth? You can just nod. It yes, is. Right. Yes. No, it is. <laughs> Same. I can constantly ask you just yes, no questions, <laughs> which is totally fine. Um, and I think the turnout has been pretty good at those, which is great. Um, so hopefully people will be there again. Um, and it's it's really nice. Um, next next item is we've badged over 100 events or at least right at 100 events, which is pretty awesome. Pretty happy about that. And I'm guessing that we're going to see a whole variety of new events showing up here shortly um, in association with OSSNA. Typically, there's a bunch of events that get badged right around that time. Um, and now that it's almost March, I'm guessing that's coming pretty soon. Um, yes, no, Elizabeth, are you feeling pretty confident on like the number of badgers that we have for the potential influx of, okay. Great. Yeah, I will just say um, there is a badger orientation um, March 15th. So anybody who is it's a, it's right at like the second half of the normal badger meeting. So if anyone's interested in being a badger, you can attend that. Okay. Actually, I did have I was talking with some somebody in Slack who was looking to participate. I've been encouraging a lot of people to actually participate as a badger. If they're interested in the chaos project, just um, particularly around DEI, I think it's a great way to kind of see the metrics, to kind of see the metrics in practice, and meet a whole bunch of other people who are doing similar work. All right, great. Uh, how do, they, uh, how yeah. do they determine who they who they request do do the badges? Because I've been a volunteer on that for well, since the beginning, and I, I think I've gotten a total of two requests to do badges. I think Kevin, you might be listed as like a. Um, so there's different levels. You can be a normal, normal level, which means you'll get in the regular rotation. There's one that's occasional, and there's one that's like only if you desperately need us. And then there's one that's I'm, I'm taking a break. So I think oh. you're maybe either taking a break or listed as like only in desperation times. <laughs> okay. We can, bump you, we can bump you up if you want. If you want to be bumped up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, feel free to bump me up if you're if you're looking for people to badge. Feel free to bump me up. Yeah. Likewise, for anyone else who wants to be more of a badger or is feeling too much and they want to be bumped down, now's a good time to re look at all of that. So I, yeah, I mean, I I would say if there's a load that a, a group of in the community are taking. That is too much work. I'll, I'm happy to jump in and do some. So you can put me on that list also. The list of the maybes, the, if you need to help. Yeah, the list of basically people shouldn't be dying doing this. And, you know, asking me if I have to do one or two a week, I'm sure I can factor that in. OK, great. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Sean. And thank you, Elizabeth. Great. Um, 
I'm going to keep coming back to you, Elizabeth. So adding a shadow role to chaos. Oh, this is right. Okay. So I think I know what you're talking about here. So, so the chaos project, as many of you know, this even came up in our metrics model meeting this morning. Like it, it has a lot of fluidity of people that move in and out of working groups and move in and out of kind of initiatives and projects. And this is fine, um, but it does create some problems sometimes when people leave and they're gone forever. <laughs> we don't know where they went. And uh, there are certain questions that we're trying to answer that we just can't answer. Um, so I think this is about just, I think it's encouraging working groups and software uh, groups to really think about maybe who their maintainers are and, and adding shadow folks who, if one person was to leave, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be left uh, just, just out there uh, with real challenges and trying to get something started going again. Um, was there something you wanted to add there, Elizabeth? Not really, just um, that that idea for that came from the working group, uh, the communications working group, who got that idea from another project. I want to say maybe Kubernetes. I'm not sure, but um, so it, yeah, that's it, it's not like it's come from nowhere. It's it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, Kubernetes does this, and and what it is, it's not so much a backup for somebody. It's a way for somebody to learn um, how to do a particular thing. So for example, this actually started in Kubernetes and the release teams because Kubernetes releases are super complicated. There are like 10 different roles and each of those roles has several shadows. And so those shadows um, learn how to do that role. So for example, like um, managing enhancements, like the new features that go into Kubernetes, there's a whole role for that and several shadows. And then the idea is that at some point, one of those shadows will move up and then do that role in, in the future. So, so the idea is it's sort of like a mentoring like plus plus. So it's not just like um, mentoring somebody, but it's actually letting them watch you do a role and help out with something so that they can then maybe eventually move into that particular role. Does that make sense? It's a little different than what I think Matt just described. Yeah, it sounds like apprentice. Sounds like apprenticeship. Really, there's an apprenticeship pro process for some of these yeah. roles. Yeah, it's very much like that. So maybe maybe that changes things. Thank you for clarifying that, Dawn. Maybe it. I don't know if it changes how we feel if we need a, also have a backup or if this is something. Well, and I see. Manage. I see. Benia just came on. Was uh, um, you said this came out of the communications group? Maybe Venia wants to talk about the thoughts behind um, shadow programs. Not to put you on the spot two seconds after you join the call, but but I totally am. Or maybe not. She's on mute. Samantha, or sorry, Vinny is on mute. Okay, that's, that's helpful then. Um, yeah, you're right. I was describing it as that's what you were talking okay. about otherwise, which was Can just, you hear me? yeah, yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, yeah. So what is the shadow program or shadow role? That's the question to you I, in your mind. Are you able to define it for me? Well, I think that's, I don't know if you remember Venya, but we had added that in the communications working group, original documents. I don't know if you remember that or not. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't think that was my contribution necessarily, but does this have to do with making sure that roles continue beyond a person's volunteering? So like a mentorship kind of thing? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, I think that we definitely need it, but I don't think that we should create anything like hugely structural for it i um, i guess i'm confused as to what the question is i think it's just do we name these people and sort of identify it as a role within a repo is that kind of it 
Um, Whether or not we do that, is that the question before us? You could. I don't think you need to because it's more of a grapevine position anyway. As long as we're instigating and encouraging mentorship uh, for people who are new coming, coming in to like filter them into the specific working groups that they want, assign their roles, get them in contact with veteran members. Those veteran members should build those relationships through the grapevine. I don't think it needs to be structural in any way. I will say that that kind of that uh, the grapevine method that you're describing is hard to document in in a like say a path to leadership document, uh, whereas kind of outlining this mentoring shadowing program would create a very clear path to leadership that could be uh, signaled to our uh, community members. Yeah, and if you wanted to create a system of mentorship, like you just simply target the mentors and ask them to participate in the program. And then once that mentorship gets developed into those groups, you can just leave it as grapevine. Like you're not really building a program for the mentors and influencers, you're building a program to get them to connect and to clash. And that's really as far as you need to be involved. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Most mentorship yeah. programs, they tend to go way overboard trying to structure conversations. And as a result, a lot of newcomers will come in and they'll discover maybe one or two mentors on paper that like connect them. But if you just create small group areas for them to get connected and encourage interpersonal relationships, then they can choose the mentorship and uh, pathways of their own volition. So my advice would be not to over-engineer that. And one of the things we were talking about right before you joined was from the, um, so I think this concept comes from the Kubernetes project and it's actually really not a mentoring program at all. It really is like, like Sean put it more of an apprentice program. So it's, it's not, not kind of open-ended mentoring. Like you can, you know, talk about all, all sorts of things. It's, you know, I am, I am the person who does this. So let's, let's just say I'm the person who manages the website for, for chaos. And if I had a shadow, I could teach that person how to manage the website for chaos, which with the idea that eventually that person could maybe take over certain tasks or, or the whole task or, or something like that. So it's, it's almost more of like an on the job training program for for specific tasks. So as, as opposed to a mentoring program. Yeah, so yeah, like an apprenticeship or an internship kind of thing. Yeah, yeah don't, that, that is still mentorship. I have studied that a lot, even with corporations like Microsoft, where I did uh, some research on mentoring and onboarding. Um, uh, Kubernetes that you explain, yes, they have that program. Apache also have it. There is mentoring for new hires or new contributors. And there are also mentoring for people who are switching tasks. For example, somebody in the common group is taking a new role, let's say in, in another working group or another group of interest. There is always a, somebody that navigates that person, tries to train. And for Kubernetes that you mentioned, the release team, they have a rotative role you have to be in the team, let's say for two years, then one person guides the release cycle across a particular period and then picks the next person. And then they start training that person how to pick up and then make sure they succeed. So the end point is pushing or try to motivate people to succeed. So they give them the necessary tools, the culture and the, the, the create the environment, the space where they, they facilitate them to give them their support to succeed. That also happens with OpenStack. So it's it's not only about the new the new uh, members, even members who have been in the community for for a, for, for a long time, when they are taking a new role, the, the people who were there guides them, hold their hand up to the to the point where they succeed. So they yeah, don't exactly. want to. Exactly, it's, it's really yeah. within Kubernetes. It's considered a path to leadership. That's that's yeah. kind of. The way, yeah, the way it's, it it's, so, it's still on the, it's still under mentor, mentoring. It's well studied in the literature and even practice of has been observed also in the industry. 
Microsoft has a very excellent program that they are working on that. Linux kernel also has a program. I think I work with Kate and, Sh and Sean on the, on, on the onboard program when they were uh -huh. designing the mentoring scheme. Yeah. yeah. I so we, also... we, we, need, we need to structure it to make it uh, having a form. But the thing now is we don't try to impose so much on certain things, but it needs to be structured. Because one common case that I, I, I encounter, let's say, with uh, one community, somebody who was supposed to be a mentor had a lesser skill than the person they were supposed to mentor. So that yeah. kind of problem now caused a friction because the person was coming in from a different company, had worked for more than 20 years with hands-on, but he was coming into Microsoft as a new hired. At that point, they took somebody with three years experience who had not really experienced much. So the person's questions and talents scared the, the old Microsoft staff to run away. So without it being structured, we can always find this kind of problem where we may, we may not have, uh, well, what if I just want to say, yeah. If it's, it's implicit, always, it may I, not get done. Is yeah. Your point. I mean, can I, yeah. I also, your opinion, do you have a last comment? Because I think we do need to move on. On. Yeah, I, I also think that at this moment, we're currently talking about two completely fundamentally different programs. So the first one is being able to shadow. Great, we should build a system that allows for people to organically produce mentorship and following roles based upon the role playbook, where it's like, I want to learn how to do this for chaos. Great, we'll get you in contact with the person doing it. So that's the shadow part one, and it's a basic mentorship program. And what I think we're talking about is doing a role sponsorship and path to community development, which feels a little bit more like an explicit program to be developed. I think those are two very, very different things, and one is very much more in the weeds than the other. Fair. I think that's, I, think that's, I, I, I don't know what to quite do with this conversation, because I think to Venja's point, we might have been talking about some slightly different things. I don't, I don't know. I, there were I, a lot I, of, no, oh, Sean, go ahead. I mean, I, I think if someone steps up and, and says they want to be a leader or a maintainer on a working group, then, you know, we should have a way to mentor them to do that. And I think it's okay if, if we just say, if we just say this is a potential role for your work, working group to consider, it, you know, we don't have to enforce it, but it sure doesn't seem like a bad idea. And I think actually implicitly in most cases, we kind of have that today. We just haven't been explicit about it. I agree. With, I, I agree with John. Yeah. It's just a way for us to, to document the process and and share it with the community. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think um, it does no harm, so and potentially a great deal of good. Yeah. Okay. Um can we maybe pick this up next time? I have some thoughts too, but I'm not gonna add them here. Right so now. I think other people might have thoughts as well. So um All right. Um, okay, yeah, because we only have seven minutes before we move over to chaos con discussion. So um, chaos con registration is open. So thank you everybody um, for kind of getting that going. I think it's twenty dollars. Um, so please feel free to register. In this case, you do have to register for OSSNA prior to chaos con registration. So that's that is what is going on here. Um. Let's see the Compass team. So Compass is a, a group of folks who have been joining us on the Asia Pacific call. And I think they're using Grimoire Lab as um, their underlying technology. And uh, they most they recently launched uh, their Compass software. It's not a chaos software, but it relies on chaos technologies. And they also are part of the metrics model working group you know, and helping us take a look at some of those metrics models in practice. So congratulations to that team. I think they had a, a launch party last week uh, that went really well. And Elizabeth did a video for them. <laughs> and it was really great <laughs> as you smile and shake your head. So <laughs> I'm the only one with like the super informal headshot. They're all very <laughs> professional. And then here's me and my dog 
and your chaos t-shirt chaos t-shirt they're all like yeah it's like it was great you did a great job <laughs> um okay so then the next thing is just with respect to readmes in working groups i'm just asking if working groups can just reflect on their readmes in their repositories um some of them have broken links now because when we did the website update you know some of them were pointing to say like a participate <coughs> page that doesn't exist anymore you know what i mean and we should just point them to the calendar page or they were pointing to a metrics page that i think like the just the name has changed to metrics and metrics models on the website so just if you could go into your readme and take a look at uh those links also copyrights need to be updated some of those are pretty old on the readme's as well um so just take a call we should sorry we should um talk about being consistent in the copyright statements not necessarily in this call but okay. um lf guidance is not to put the year at all and just say what, copyright oh, yeah okay. i i commented on your pull request in i saw that comments. i didn't see the comment but okay yeah, so so basically they recommend saying copyright like like the chaos projects contributors or the chaos okay. project. They, they have like three different formats that they recommend. Um, but we actually don't need the date at all, which makes okay. it so we're not constantly updating it because that's just a lot of date. But we should be consistent. We should pick a pick away and then do it across all the readmes and all the great. files. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, I'll take a look at that comment that you added. And then also the contributing uh, MDs in the repositories are also inconsistent at the moment. So some have, some do include a commentary about including DCO. Um, I think we had talked about possibly removing some of the how to use Git lines that we have in our contributing file, because I don't know how helpful those four lines necessarily are in getting people to use Git, where we could just point them to something else. So the contributing files are also pretty inconsistent right now across working groups. So um, I'm, I'm actually taking a look at that right now um, for an earlier discussion we had, I think, in the metrics model meeting just because that was a contributing file that was different from the rest and I think common is different and anyway I'm going to go through the working groups and try to see what consistency or lack of consistency we have in our contributing files any comments on any of those things yet Kevin uh so the uh uh then yeah we do have a we do have a broken link checker just uh just so you know we do uh we do use that on the website uh, but the, in response to the participate page, there is an issue open, uh, I think, on the website page about redirecting that participant link to either the community page or the calendar. Uh, I was just okay. waiting. I'm waiting on a response to that to see where you want it to go and if you want me to do it or if someone else wants to do it. I had been in the updates when I was looking at it just on the readme's. I was just pointing people to the calendar. So maybe that's the way to go. Okay. So I'll just, I'll just add a a redirect so the anything coming into that participate goes to the calendar okay or right. unless someone else wants to do it right okay venya did you have a comment thanks kevin mm -hmm. did you have a comment to venya or just was it i'm reading it now in the chat okay i had a question about this um can you hear me now do yes. I have audio? Hey. Audible. Um, so you you mentioned you're, Matt, you're going to go through and see what they look like. Should should that mean we? Sorry, should we expect a sort of templated guidance on how to change these? Because if we all go in and update them, they still might all be different. Yeah. So. <laughs> what do you know? I just like I didn't want to like run ahead before. Mm -hmm. Like I know Don's comment of like here's how we could standard standardize our copyright like. Maybe there are other points that you could give. Yeah, no, that's, that's on. yeah. Let me let me do that. I'll do it for readmes and contributing. We had also talked about like things in the readmes around maintainers because I think a lot of the maintainers are pretty old, and the way that we list maintainers is not always the same. Um, the way that we list contributors is not like the people contributing is not always the same in the readmes. So yeah, let me let me do that. I thought I thought we actually did have a template for that. Do we not? 
when we, when we did the restructure I'll go a couple of years back, the, kind of where we made all the working groups kind of look very similar. I thought they created a, a template for the... Yeah, they might have just driven it over time. I'll go take a look. I'm, I know we have a contributing template because I did see that. And I do actually think we have a readme template now that I think about that, that templates box. So more to come on that. Okay. Um, it looks like all things open has a, a CFP or yeah, all things open has a CFP that's open uh, until March 31st. So great. Um, and then I just wanted to let you know, you know, we've had the, the uh, chaos OSPO to do group that has gone really, really well over the course of the last two months or so. We have really great turnout in that. And it's really about um, folks in, in corporate OSPOs uh, talking through metrics and metrics models uh, and software that's useful in that particular context. Uh, we were also having a conversation with the OSPO++ group. And I did have a conversation with Saeed uh, from Carnegie Mellon and um, Stephanie from Santa Cruz and Claire from OSPO++ about doing something similar for uh, university OSPOs or university folks that are interested in metrics. And the reception was really, really positive. So I think we're going to start that kind of that user group as well, um, similar to the to the corporate OSPO working group that we have right now. So like an academic OSPO working group. You got it. Yep. Just we were because we were kind of together for a while in that. Yeah. And it's just I think it would be hard to kind of have both conversations in the same place, like. If we were talking about university specific metrics, I think some of the folks that are in corporate firms might <laughs> listen to that conversation and be like, this is not at all what I'm interested in. Um, and then vice versa, as we talk about things that are specific in a corporate context, those at universities would likely say the same. This is not, not precisely what we're interested in. So I think we can just carry those conversations on uh, within their own user group. All right. Great. That's yeah, the end no, of the agenda. Uh, well, we still have more time on the clock, sir. Yeah, so. Well, we have this <laughs> we have chaos con planning. So I'm gonna. All right. I'm gonna stop the recording. And.